It's your boy Smoke Soul. We're back at it with another one. And this time, we're about to have some fun, man. About to go over what a panel of 15 coaches, scouts, and executives have to say about the upcoming season. I love to see these men and women perspective on the sport. Um, they are the people that's making decisions, very important decisions. So I just love to see what they value. Can we find consistencies in their values and stuff like that? So when the annual GM survey comes out before the season start, we'll be covering that too. So their first question, who's the best player in the NBA right now? And not a spicy conversation. It's definitely Giannis. Um, Steph Curry got three votes. LeBron got a vote. LeBron getting a vote. Hey, he is one of the, still one of the most dominant offensive players in the league. The Lakers didn't have much to play for, so you know the, the defensive intensity is kind of down. But maybe if it was up, they would have something to play for. I'm not sure. Steph Curry getting three votes. Usually, you know, when you win the championship, you win Finals MVP. You can be crowned the best player in the world. We saw how that went in 2019 with Kawhi. A lot of people say he was the best. Um, right, that's right or that's wrong. But Giannis is the the right choice here for me. He definitely has improved his game. Uh, Gilbert Arenas, he definitely has improved his game. Much better passer, much better decision maker, a better mid-range shooter. He's a phenomenal defender now, one of the best in the league. All that stuff takes time to get better at. You just don't wake up and get good at that stuff just because you are a freak of nature. So Giannis being the best in the league for the second year in a row in this um, survey. Pretty good stuff. I think it's facts. Who will be the best player in five years? Giannis got seven votes. Luka got six votes. Tatum got two votes. Wow, that's close between Luka and Giannis, man. And those are obviously the two future faces of the NBA. I think Luka will be in the top five as soon as next season. You know, so who would I have for the next six years? Right now, I would probably pick Giannis too, but Luka is doing stuff that we haven't seen, man. Like, look at his trajectory and look at what LeBron and Jordan was doing when they first got into the league. The stats are similar in the sense of, okay, this guy was really, really dominant as soon as he got to the NBA. Not too many players can say that. You know, Luka has, like, basically averaged 30 points per game in almost every series of his playoff career. He's a problem. Luka Doncic is a problem. You do want to see how he fits with better players, but still, man, that man is a one-man offense. He is an issue. But I'm going to take Giannis for the next five years for the, um, the two-way versatility, just the sheer dominance that Giannis has, man. Like, you literally have to throw two to three guys at him if you really want to stop him. Most teams have abandoned that game plan. They just play him one-on-one -on -one and just hopefully to shoot, to make sure the shooters don't beat them. So, you know. But Luka hasn't had that guy with him. He hasn't had a Middleton or a Drew Holiday next to him. So we'll see, man, looking forward. But I, I think I got um, Giannis. But that's definitely a reasonable close call. I can see why Luka got six votes. Obviously, super dominant. Who won the MVP this year? Giannis got five votes. Luka got four. B got four. Curry won and John Morant won. I don't really see, I don't really see Jock competing. I don't think his team will be good enough. I think Jaron Jackson being sidelined until maybe December will hurt this team a lot. You know, it's going to hurt their defense. If they, they had a top 10 offense and defense last year, I believe. So I think their defense will be hurt without Jaron Jackson. But if Ja can keep these guys afloat, like let's say he's averaging like 28 and 9, yeah, he'll definitely deserve some consideration. Curry got a vote. He can win any year. He type, you know, he could just... When I say he can win any year, like he's capable of going off any year. Like he can win the scoring title. He can be 50-40-90 this year. So he obviously is a good candidate. But these next two candidates, Embiid and Doncic, I feel like these will who it really will come down to. Embiid, it will be kind of the sense of as long as the Sixers like got a good record, maybe like top three. Embiid is like, okay, we'll give it to you. You know, we haven't <laughs> these last two years, you gotta make a case that you deserved it. So I feel like next year he is kind of the favorite coming into the season. And then Luka, he's just the one everybody wants to see when I feel like. 
in the media. I feel like every single year in the, in the preseason, Luca's name is up here because he's going to be flirting with a 30-point triple-double every year of his career. So if Dallas ever gets the wins and stuff, Luca will definitely be up there for a lot of voters. I think guys like Giannis and Jokic have to do, do something spectacular to get it since Giannis won it back-to-back and um, Jokic won it back-to-back these two years. Steph Curry won it back-to-back. At this point, it's kind of a while ago. Ain't that crazy? The 15, 2015 to 2016, it's kind of a while ago, but I just feel like Curry doesn't have the voter for T that they have, even though he has two two of them. It was kind of a while ago. Giannis is still kind of fresh in our mind. And Giannis, to me, is entering at LeBron stage where every single year, he'll probably be a top four to five candidate. But when they give it to him every year, they won't. They didn't, they didn't do that for LeBron. They didn't do it for Jordan. So Giannis is entering that category. But for next year MVP, I'm going to go with Embiid. I'm going to go with Embiid. I feel like, yeah, Joel Embiid is due to win MVP this year. This is going to be kind of like, yeah, here you go. Even though he's going to be averaging like 30 and 13 and still a crazy versatile score. Ooh, the Young Dogs, who will be the best rookie in five years? Paolo, six votes. Chet, six votes. Jaden Ivey, two votes. Shout out to my boy. Keegan Murray with one vote. Gotta go with the vote. I gotta go with the um the coaches and the GMs and the scouts on this one. I'm taking Paolo, though, over Chet. That versatility that Paolo has as a scorer, I think it's going to be very valuable in the league, man. He's a willing passer. He's shown that he can make those type of reads and stuff. I think he could actually be the Magic's primary initiator as soon as this season. But they have folks, Suggs and Cole Anthony, all are solid guards, but none of them are super dynamic. Like They all have maybe one good trait, and then the other trait they need to be an elite playmaker they don't have. Like, Markel can't shoot. Cole Anthony isn't the most willing passer. Jalen Suggs isn't the best scorer right now. Markel is a phenomenal passer. Cole Anthony is a bucket. That's his, that's his best um, attribute. And Jalen Suggs on offense right now, his best attribute is probably driving, but defense overall is his best attribute. So none of those guys have it all the way put together to be an offensive engine. Paolo can dribble, pass, and shoot. Always has his heads up, making him look the right decision. Super strong and physical guy. So I do feel like he'll be the best rookie in five years. Chet can be a phenomenal rim protector, stretch the floor. You know, he can get it a little bit, handle the ball a little bit, depending on the matchup, stuff like that. Jay and Ivy will be amazing though, playing with on K, perfect fit. Keegan Murray, hopefully he can help the Kings get out of this. It's just this trash stage of a franchise, man. It's just like they're the laughing stock of the league for the most part. Hopefully he can be a part of that turnaround. Jabari Smith Jr. here, yeah, he wasn't on here. I always had thoughts about his own ball creating, so I never really viewed him in that light. Like, when he was supposed to go number one, I really didn't agree with that. So, which team will KD be on the day after the trade deadline? Yeah, the Nets dominated this one. Interesting topic. Hmm. I would say Brooklyn, too. Like, KD can say that stuff about his legacy like he don't care, but it just seemed like he do, man. It seemed like he do care from his tweets, and it's fine. It's fine to care. We all humans. Like, we literally are wired to care about what people think about us. So, I bring that, I bring that up to say, like, winning for Brooklyn would be the best thing for his legacy, which he seems to care about. Like, now, with everything that's went down, Brooklyn is not looked at as a super team at all. So, this would be the first time if he got it done, the overwhelming narrative would be, oh, KD earned it. Oh, KD drug his team, even though Kyrie is still there. Still a superstar talent. And Ben Simmons is the, you know, that's the question mark. If he hits, this team will be phenomenal. Because Ben Simmons is all this team needs. A type of player like Ben Simmons. A player that can go out there and defend. He can guard five positions. He can get boards. He can push the pace. He can set up Kyrie and KD, get the ball in them in their spots. Stuff like that. Really in transition. I don't want to see Ben Simmons running the offense in a half court. That, unless he is, like, attacking, like, Giannis when playing dominant like super aggressive and looking for a shot at the rim like trying to attack I don't want to see him run the offense just too much of a liability if he is still reluctant to be an aggressive scorer and reluctant to shoot 
But yeah, I'm going to go with the Brooklyn Nets, the Suns, and the Celtics. Aiden is possible, though. Like, the Aiden stuff, that's possible. But let's see. The Nets didn't want him in the summer. So why would they really want to build with him next year? Like, does DeAndre Aiden get better? And they see that and say, oh, yeah, let's get him. But I doubt that. And the Celtics, I'm expecting them to get off to a good start. And they're probably going to get – they're going to be in the midst of the season. Like, nah, we good. Let's rock with Jalen Brown. We're like the first seed, looking like the favorites to win the whole championship. Let's keep Jalen Brown. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have KD with the Nets. Ooh, yeah, this is a little bit late. Um, this article came out eight days ago. I should have been did this, but yeah, Donovan Mitchell is on the Cleveland Cavaliers, as we all know. Shout out to him for leaving the Jazz. He will get to compete again. Or well, it might be his first time competing, depending on who you ask. Which team had the best offseason? The Celtics, the Sixers, the Jazz, the Hawks, the Clippers, the Knicks, the Kings, and the Wizards. So the Boston Celtics have six votes. Um, adding Malcolm Brogdon and adding Gallo without giving up much. That's a very successful offseason. For a team that just went to the finals and that needed to address the playmaking and scoring parts of their team to get Brogdon for nothing that was a great addition and Gallo obviously a knockdown shooter the Sixers picking up PJ picking up House picking up Melton Melton is a major addition this offseason like he really rounds out that Sixers bench and he was a quality player for the Grizzlies last year the Grizzlies losing him and Kyle Anderson should hurt them and Jaron Jackson being down so that's why I'm kind of lowering on them Headed into the season, the playoffs are a whole different ball game. But heading into the season, kind of lowering the Grizzlies and losing Melton was a big reason why. Like I, I like Melton's game, super long wingspan, good um, on ball defender, can get in the passing lanes, can throw lobs, has bounce. You know what I mean? I just feel like he plays the game the right way. So him being in that backup role to Tyrese Maxey, most likely, solid pickup, solid pickup. The Jazz, everybody loved the picks they got and stuff. Hawks, no. Everybody talk about the Timberwolves causing the trade market to, to get where it was with the Rudy Gobert deal. But the Hawks did trade like three first for DeJounte first. They did that. Like the Hawks set the market, the Timberwolves doubled down on it. And you know, the, um, the Cavaliers followed suit when they made the trade to acquire Donovan Mitchell. But the Hawks did not have one of the best offseason, not even one of the best offseasons to me. Clippers. Not really. The Knicks got their guy in Jalen Brunson, but no. The Kings, I like what they did. Bringing in Herder. They need they needed shooting for a while. Especially pairing with De'Aaron Fox. We all saw how dynamic De'Aaron Fox was after the Halliburton trade. And you could argue they should have kept Halliburton because maybe his game is more suited for the way the NBA is headed right now. A guard that can dribble, pass, and shoot. And he's a better passer. Really just a better playmaker than De'Aaron Fox is, even though De'Aaron Fox has more rim pressure. But they kept Fox. So, to maximize Fox, put shooters around him. Him and Sabonis in the pick and roll are amazing. But Sabonis is also a great pass. So, get shooters around him. So, grabbing Malik Monk. Grabbing uh, Keegan Murray. Grabbing Kevin Herter. Just some great additions for the um, this, this Kings team. Like I said earlier in this video, I want the Kings to get out of mediocrity. I'm a De'Aaron Fox fan. I think playing for the Kings can kind of mess up our perception of guys because it's the Kings. Like, a lot of guys are going to look good for the Kings, but I think this is the year that De'Aaron Fox should really make some noise. He could, he should average up to, like, 27 to 28 points per game, just with the way his team is structured and the way he played down the stretch. Like, put that together for the whole season. He did it a few years ago. He was insane. Was that 2020 or 2019? One of those years when he was shooting, like, 72% at the run, he was insane. So yeah, and the Wizards, they had a good offseason too, but I don't feel like it was one of the best. Shout out to shout out to them for grabbing Monte Morris, putting him and Cools together, putting the Flint boys together. That's what's up. What team had the worst offseason? Wow. No Miami Heat. That's interesting. The whole um the whole offseason on NBA Twitter has definitely been the Heat. Everybody. The Heat just stayed pat. The rest of the East got better. So yeah, I'm surprised to see no Heat, but that just shows the difference between um, 
NBA Twitter and like how exec- executives and stuff think. But the Dallas Mavericks got six votes because they lost Jalen Brunson. Mm, I don't like this. I don't like this vote at all. The Hornets with three votes, I can see that losing Miles and whatever, not getting better. Um, the Brooklyn Nets two votes. The Denver Nuggets. That is a terrible opinion. That is flat out terrible. I guess you don't really include like them bringing guys back, like um, Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. That's fine. But they grabbed Bruce Brown and they grabbed KCP. Do you think that the the trade was bad? They needed perimeter defense. They lost Will Barton and they lost Monte Morris. They needed perimeter defense, three and D guys to fit with Yoke, fit around Jokic and Jamal Murray. That is terrible. The Nuggets will be one of the best teams in the NBA this year. That's terrible. The Lakers, of course, somebody had to pick them. On um, the Timberwolves, I disagree. I could see. You know, they, they took a gamble, but I just disagree with that. I think that gamble was worth it. In Portland, what? You think they didn't with this one voter? What could Portland realistically do? <laughs> like, Aiden got re-signed. Miles, his situation happened. What could Portland do? But the Dallas Mavericks, man, I hate it. I really hate that opinion. They grabbed Christian Wood, who I'm not the highest on, but I do feel like he can maybe change his defensive effort in this new ecosystem like he's around much better defenders a better defensive culture so that can that can cause certain guys to lock in and say okay i have to play defense here like everybody is playing defense here they're holding me accountable i gotta play defense and he's much better than the center they had last year wherever they started as center he was better than like after the Porzingis trade i like um cleaver i like dwight powell but christian wood is a better talent than those guys so him in the pick and pop with Luka should be solid. Like I said, the defensive questions are there, but you just hope that playing under Jason Kidd, playing with Dorian Finney-Smith, playing around Reggie Bullock, playing with JaVale McGee, playing with all these, playing with Maxi Cleaver, playing with all these guys that play defense. Hopefully they can bring that out of them. They grabbed Jaden Hardy in the draft. Like that might be the steal of the draft. He is, he was projected to go like top five before a season in the G League. Playing with grown men, it, 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 caused, it caused him to slip. Still has a lot of potential. I mean, he's a bucket. That was a great pickup. You know, I, I like the Javel McGee pickup a lot. They, they need a rim protection. Javel McGee's another lob threat. So I, they, they, it got six votes because they lost Jalen Bronson. When Spencer Dinwiddie can replicate the scoring part, he will not be able to replicate the passing that Jalen Bronson and brought to the table. And he's not better than Jalen Bronson. So it's a downgrade. But Spencer Dinwiddie is still nice. This Dinwiddie is still nice. For them to get most of these votes, I don't like it at all. I will, um, who would I have then? Maybe the Hornets. Probably so. Just because the Miles stuff. And I feel like the Hornets will be down there with, like, the Pistons. And, yeah. I feel like them, those two teams will be fighting for, like, 13th and 12th in the East. So the Hornets went from two years in a row with Melo making a play in, trying to knock on that door, trying to get into the playoffs to feel like they'll be like, you know, like I said, 12 or 13. So I maybe will have them first, but I don't like that Mavericks pick at all. The Mavericks had, I would give their offense, I mean, their offseason like a B. What was the most surprising move of the offseason? Rudy Gobert overwhelmingly took this one. Um, I could, I could get with that. Just the sheer amount of picks and stuff. Nobody saw that coming. And then, I guess the fit with Cat and Gobert, you would think like, man, will they work together? But after all, the, after what, two and a half months of the trade happening, I think they will fit. They have qualities that each other lacks. And Cat can shoot more threes now. Gobert is playing with a great live passer and Rudy Gobert. Not Rudy Gobert, but D'Angelo Russell. So, yeah, that was the most surprising move, but I actually think it's solid, too. Yeah, Russ still being a Laker got a vote. Yeah, he made it's tough. Russell Westbrook, for me, he doesn't really fit a lot of teams' timeline right now. Like, he's too good to go to a tanking team. When I say that, it's like, if he went to the, to the Pacers right now, in my opinion, they, they would be projected to go from 15th to, like, 11th. So he ruins the tank because he is a floor raiser. He's a carrier. 
give Westbrook mediocre talent, he's going to make it work a lot better than a lot of other point guards would. A lot of other point guards cannot carry like what's the worst for. That doesn't make him a better player than guys, but a lot of players can't, a lot of point guards, small guys, can't put teams on their back like Russ can. So him being a Laker, to me, it's, it's tough to move him. It's tough to move him right now. Who will win the East Finals and the West Finals? The East Champs, Boston got seven votes. The Bucks got seven votes. The Heat got a vote. Shout out to you. Rocking with my boys. The Clippers got up eight votes. The Suns got three. The Warriors got three. The Nuggets got one. NBA champs. Clippers five. Bucks four. Celtics four. Celtics. I mean Warriors two. So East Champs with the Bucks. I got the Bucks. I think they would have made the finals last year if they had Chris Middleton. Um, I think if they are healthy, they will be the best team in the East. And they can get to the finals. They had the best player in the world. A great infrastructure around them. This is just a great team. Chris Middleton is one of the clutchest players. So many one-leg jumpers. Just has every one-leg shot in his game. I love Chris Middleton game. And he definitely woke us up in the um, 2021 playoffs. Yeah, he was up and down. But when it really counted, that man turned into Michael Jordan every single time. Like, I think I saw a stat that he was 100% in the clutch against the Suns. Like, that makes no sense. And when you watch the shots Chris Middleton was taking... That makes no sense. A one-leg skill maestro, man. Love his game. West champs. Yeah, Clippers at eight. Obviously, this is the year they they could, they can finally do it. It's one of, they have the deepest team in the NBA with one of the best coaches in Ty Lue. But um, I like the Nuggets, man. I, I really like the Nuggets. I really like what they did this offseason. And I like that they're getting their guys back. So I think I'm gonna go with um I'm gonna go with a Giannis and Jokic finals. That's my official prediction. And um I'm 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 set with that. I'm content with that. I'm gonna go with a Giannis and Jokic finals. And I'm gonna go with the Bucks. I'm gonna go with Giannis getting his second ring, the most dominant player in the NBA, matching up with arguably the most skilled big ever, arguably the one of the one of the best offensive bigs ever, man. Like. That conversation with Jokic is coming sooner than later. So for all my old school fans who love, you know, the NBA of the past and defending the players that deserve to be defended and deserve to keep their legacy alive, Jokic is coming. I'm gonna say that Jokic is coming compared to all those bigs. So give me, I'm gonna give me the Bucks in six when Giannis getting his second Finals MVP. Oh, and that's it. And that's it. So. Gave us 10 questions, 15, 15 voters, man, some coaches, executives, some scouts. I wonder what that breakdown was like. I'm more, I'm actually more intrigued with the coaches and the scouts. I know, I know the GM does a lot of, um, like, you know, research too, but I really want to see the scouts and the coaches, man, people that just break down film for a living, basically. And if the GM does that, I guess I would be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they have too many responsibilities to break down film for a living like scouts do. So yeah, shout out to Tim Bontemps from ESPN. Great article. Got some good nuggets in here, man. And when the GM survey drops before the season starts, we'll be right back at it. So I appreciate y'all rocking with me, man.